or is that our feedback? I think, I think that's me. Okay. Sounds like it's well, we are online. Um, and we have Doreen on Zoom. It's good to see you. Hi there. Doreen. All right, so we are going to uh, get started here. Um, welcome everybody to the March 26th, 2024 meeting of the Cape Elizabeth Zoning Board of Appeals. The meeting will come to order. This is a public proceeding, and unless the board specifically votes to go into executive session, you have the right to hear everything that is being said and to look at all of the exhibits that are offered. Please notify the chairperson, uh, me for now, Kate shortly, <laughs> if uh, you're unable to hear or to see. The board works from a prepared agenda and will be considering tonight's items in the following order. First is roll call, second approving the minutes from the January 23rd meeting. Um, we do not have any old business tonight. We have one piece of new business and then we will adjourn. As for the new business being considered, the burden is upon the applicant to demonstrate compliance with the provisions of the applicable ordinance or ordinances. After the board votes on the merits of each project application, it will prepare a written opinion. Because the written opinion may substantially affect any appeal rights and also as a matter of courtesy, the board asks that those attending the meeting with regard to a specific project not leave until the board has taken the second vote adopting a written opinion. Generally speaking, appeals from adverse decisions must be filed with the Superior Court, except as otherwise provided by law within 45 days of this board's decision. Also, to be certain that you preserve your individual right to file any such appeal, you must be certain that this board's record evidences your appearance this evening and the basis for your support or opposition. Again, remember this is a public proceeding and you have the right to hear and see what is happening. All persons speaking will be asked to first state their name and address or affiliation. Um, any questions? I guess one thing um, that we'll have to do, we have a, a board member who is participating via Zoom, is all votes will have to be roll call uh, votes. So probably should have discussed that with Ben beforehand. Um, but if there are no questions, then I will ask uh, Ben to call the roll and identify those absent, if any. Joseph Barbieri. Present. Kevin Just. Present. Doreen Rockstrom. Present. Adam Foster Webster. Present. Colin Powers. Present. Diana Chapman. Present. Catherine Kirkham. Present. Awesome. Well, we have everybody here. Thank you. And we do have a quorum. Uh, so the first item is to approve the minutes from January 23rd. Anybody have? Spotless. I didn't even find a typo. <laughs> it was a, this was a, a, a interesting meeting and a lot um, on here. So if you're feeling good about it, Joe, is that a motion to approve? <laughs> motion to approve the minutes. All right. Do we have a second? I second. Second by Diana. Um, any further discussion? All those in favor? Oh, we have to call the roll on this one. <laughs> Sorry, Ben. <laughs> Joe Barbieri. Aye. Kevin Juss. Yes. Doreen Rockstrom. Yes. Diana Chapman. Yes. Catherine Kirkham. Yes. Adam Foster Webster. Yes. Colin Powers. Yes. All right. Uh, so we are moving on, and the new business here is to hear the request of Stefan Rorick, owner of the property at 11 Spruce Lane, map U36, lot 49, to obtain a conditional use permit to operate an art studio as a home business based on section 19-5-5 of the zoning ordinance. Um, so to get this started, uh, I am going to recuse myself um, from this item. Uh, Mr. Rorick is my next door neighbor. Um, I have no financial interest, but as folks may have read up, there are really kind of two reasons to recuse oneself. One is a direct financial interest or some sort of um, uh, interest that could be perceived as financial. The other is either direct bias or appearance of bias, and that comes out of the Town Council Code of Ethics, which were required uh, here. Now, just to be very clear, I have no bias. This is my next door neighbor. He's a wonderful family. I, I enjoy him. Um, I, I think it's important to understand, and I apologize, I'm going on a little long here, but this is the first one of these that we've considered, and really the first time in recent memory I've had a recusal come up. Um, I helped uh, the applicant here in his initial um, request to the town council to write the ordinance language that's being presented here. So for the avoidance of any potential appearance of bias, I think it's appropriate um, for me to step back. So I will be doing that and leaving you all in the capable hands of the vice chair. Is that 
Secretary? Secretary. Temporary chair. Temporary chair. <laughs> Here, I'll just move this. Oh. All right. We have a huge gathering here this evening to hear the request of Stefan Rurik, owner of the property at 11 Spruce Lane, map U36, lot 49, to obtain a conditional use permit to operate an artist studio as a home business based on section 19-5-5 of the zoning ordinance. And Tim, did you want to give us some background? Yes. Uh, this is a non-conforming lot in the RA zone. Uh, the applicant is proposing to construct an accessory structure to operate an artist studio out of, and uh, the proposed structure will, will meet the required setbacks, of course. And the other important aspect of this is, uh, as Kevin said, this is, this is our first application under the new ordinance. In December, the town council voted to adopt some changes to the home business regulations. One of the, the, the bigger changes is that it's now allowed in accessory structures that, that aren't constructed yet. Uh, prior to that, it said it could be done in accessory structure if it existed prior to 1998. Uh, it also allows an additional employee on the site, and those, those were the bigger changes to be aware of. Uh, the conditional use standards uh, remain unchanged, but uh, that the definition of home business was changed in December by the town council. I have a question. Are we approving the, we're not approving the, the structure itself, are we? No, no, you're not. Uh, there'll be a there'll be a subsequent building permit if uh, if if this is approved and if the applicant decides to move forward, there'll be a building permit for the proposed structure. All right. Um, at this time, if you want to come up to the microphone here, we're going to be recording everything, so it's important that you do speak into the microphone and just talk to us about your application. Okay. Uh, hi, I'm Stefan, 11 Spruce Lane. Um, yeah, I'm uh, trying to hopefully uh, construct a studio on my property. Um, I make art, sculpture, furniture. Uh, I don't sell from my premises. Um, everything I do gets uh, predominantly shipped to New York where it's sold out of the gallery. Um, so just want to make that clear, it's not a store. Um, it's only where I make the product and then the product gets taken off site and sold otherwise. So it's no, um, there's no people coming to buy from the uh, the uh, proposed structure. Um, what else? Uh, we do have um, some uh, uh, machines that would be making noise, the loudest of which would be our um, dust collector, which is um, 70 dBA. Um, so unless you're aware, like 70 dBA is um, actually the sound of like a washing machine, but um, the proposed structure, I'm gonna insulate it with, uh, it's a product called ATB Rockwell, which has an STC 50 uh, rating. So that's gonna cut that, cut that DBA down to half. Um, so theoretically, the noise coming out of the structure is gonna be 25 DBA. Um, and that's, I mean, depending on your distance, but that's like the sound of a fan. Kind of. Um, so yeah, my intention is obviously not to um, disrupt or um, annoy anyone around me. Um, my intention is just to be able to uh, utilize the property I have, um, construct a structure that is it's set back, I think, from the street, probably like 60 feet. Um, it's going to be, you guys have the documents, but it's going to be black. Um, I, I want it to be as inconspicuous as possible. Um, and I think that with taking the appropriate uh, 
noise, um, dampening precautions. Um, like I said, uh, to begin with, it's not really that loud. I, I currently actually work in um, the Pepperell Mills in Biddeford. That's where my studio is now. And there's actually uh, living units above my unit as the mill is constructed. So not that that has any bearing, but there's already people living in conjunction with where I operate. Um, so um, there, that hasn't been an issue. Um, and yeah, like I said, we have a uh, heparated dust collection system, so there's no uh, matter or anything um, gnarly getting out there. We're predominantly working with um, wood that's all getting sucked up into there. So I don't, um, I don't see or anticipate how what I propose to do is going to be really causing um, any um, issue. I have one employee. Uh, the hours of operation would be 8 to 5 p.m. Um, the only traffic that would be increased would be the my one employee coming in the morning and leaving. I would obviously not be coming and leaving. Uh, deliveries of material, we honestly, um, because we're making, um, like I operate in this uh, area of like, uh, it's, it's like a artistic, for, it, it's stuff that uh, has a utility, but it's art, it's like this weird, it sounds pretentious, but it's this weird gray area of like collectible design. Um, so it's not mass produced, it's not a cabinet shop, it's not pumping out high volume. Um, everything is touched by me, handmade. Um, and so there's not um, a lot of material coming in. I'd say that we get, uh, the only times we ever get material that comes in would probably be once every three months, um, it would come on a box truck from, if we get an outside vendor, it's from like uh, Atlantic Plywood. Uh, they come on a box truck. And yeah, it's pretty much every three months we get a delivery. Other than that, um, uh, it's just myself picking something up in my minivan. And like I said, once a day, the, um, my employee would be coming in. So those are the only things I think of uh, no, that would be different. And at this point, we can open up for questions from the board for the applicants. You can stay right there. We'll ask you okay. questions that we might have. We have a question. Um, hi, Diana Chapman. Um, will you have any kind of solvents or products that might be considered hazardous waste yeah, when you're uh, producing your art? Um, the only finishes I use are uh, water-based finishes uh, for my own health. Um, so, yeah, water-based finishes are non-toxic. There's no, like, VOC from them. So, uh, to answer your question, no. Um, the only, we use uh, oil finishes, um, hand-rubbed oils. We're not spraying those, but uh, all that stuff is, like, um, after the cure time, it's non-toxic, but that, that's not like a spray, it's not off-gassing or like anything, but um, the hand-rubbed oils are not water-based, but again, they're not, um, it's not like a spray booth spraying lacquer or anything like that. Yeah. So would you be doing some of your work outside the building with like oh, no. oil-based? Okay. Oh, no, no, everything's done in, in, inside, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Um, do you get, will you be getting any visitors um, to, to, to see the art or? Yeah, sadly, I don't get many visitors. <laughs> Not that I yeah. Um, no, like I said, uh, the nature of my work is uh, it's commissioned, an order is placed, uh, no one really ever comes to see it, uh, meaning it all gets uh, sent out um, predominantly to the, the New York market. Um, so. Um, no, I don't really ever have any site visits. Yeah. When, when you say the hours are eight, eight to five, is that 
Yeah. Daily or just Monday through Friday? Uh, well, my employee actually, he starts at eight and he leaves at four. I typically get there later uh, dealing with my kids and I am, uh, I, I, get, I leave by five. And so it's your intention just to confine yourself personally to the eight, eight to five? Uh, well, my, yeah, my, my intention is um, not to irritate anyone. Um, so to answer your question, I would not be, if, if I ever decided or was able to work past five, I wouldn't be doing anything that creates noise, I guess, you know what I mean? And like I said, with my, um, with the insulation planned, it's actually, uh, you guys can, I can send you guys specs on the product, but it's actually, like the, loud, the loudest machine is, uh, as I mentioned before, it's like a 70 dBA, so that's like the washing machine I have in my house. Um, so the studio is gonna be actually better insulated than my home, so. Would a person walking on the street be aware that there's activity being con uh, conducted inside the building? Um, I, that's a, I don't, uh, I don't think so. I mean, they're not aware that the washing machine is running in my house, so yeah. I, I think I would say unless the window is open, they wouldn't be aware of that, yeah. Um, th uh, this is Doreen Rockstrom. Does, th will the new uh, uh, edifice uh, replace the garage that you have? Uh, Are, no, it's just, it's going to be a. I don't know if I understand your question. It's going to be a separate structure. So that the structure that you per currently have as a garage will remain there. Yeah, that's a garage that we use for our cars. I'm, I'm I'm proposing adding an additional structure. Okay. Just. <clears throat> just just to clarify that point on he's he submitted a standard boundary survey and then he also zoomed in with a site plan the the rectangle uh, in the upper right corner the back right corner of the lot is the proposed structure you can see it goes through uh, this raised garden so that rectangle is not currently there that is the proposed building it's 38 by 53 feet. It's proposed to be 20 feet from the rear property line and 25 feet from the side property line. And then, and you okay. see the new driveway also going to it. Right. Okay. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> sort of looking at this. So you've got water-based um, finishes. And do those get sprayed at all? Uh, yeah, so the only, the only things we ever spray are yeah. water-based. And will there be air handler? Like, how do, you, how do you deal with your air handling, I guess, is the question. Sorry, how do I what? How do you deal with your air handling? Like, um, there's still overspraying stuff. Um, and then in addition, you're going to have, I assume, temperature criteria for different finishes. Yeah, I'm so sorry, gonna have like, temperature criteria. Well, you need to heat it, you need to cool it, right? The structure? Yes, I need to, I'm going to need to heat the structure. Okay, yeah. so just use full HVAC. I mean, my only thought being like if you've got a big front door and it's hot in the summer, all of a sudden you've sort of got a big door open and fans on. Yeah. And then that's sort of spilling out uh well i i guess if uh first off so i guess i didn't make myself clear so um because i don't have i currently don't have a spray booth mm -hmm. and i'm not going to have a spray booth uh, most of the spraying if there's any gets done at the spray booth as a, a separate vendor i have in okay. portland offsite yeah okay. so the only spraying that gets done in, in the shop that I currently have and moving forward in the proposed structure is like um, something that we have the capacity to spray 
which would mean uh, something along the lines of like a, a, uh, a handle, something very small, mm -hmm. which we can spray from like a rattle can. Because not to get in the weeds, but um, unless you have a spray booth, you can't spray large surfaces in an, like an efficient, aesthetically pleasing way. So the only water-based spray is happening on like, you know, something the size of this or something. So um, the overspray is uh, quite minimal because it's not like a production, it's like a little thing. So um, as I said, we use mostly predominantly hand rubbed finishes. Um, and if there is anything that is ever sprayed that's done at the uh, finishing booth offsite. I was responding to her um, a, mem a question about what, if there's any kind of like, uh, I forgot what, how you phrase it, spray right, stuff. And right. so I, we do use some spray, but it's water-based spray for little like, uh, like handles or like sculpted little things. Right. Like so it's yeah. not the entire piece? No. Okay. It's an, um, again, that would require us to have a finishing booth to avoid dust, and it's like a whole thing, and I don't, you know, it's not something I I do in our have our lab. Okay. Um, I, I have another question is storing Rockstrom. You had mentioned in the application that um, uh, y you would only have deliveries made maybe three times or every th every three months for materials. Um, is there anything that you can comment about regarding the shipping of the finished products? Uh, you had mentioned statuary. Should we assume that the trucks that or truck that would come to pick up your uh, statues would be the size of a UPS truck, or are we talking about something much bigger? And is there anything special about the trucks that will be coming to take the products that we should know about that would be pertinent to this application? Yeah, thank you. Um, so again, just to... Uh, First off, to answer, yes, they're the size of a UPS truck. We, you know, um, I would say we don't make things that are bigger than eight feet long by uh, 40, feet, 40 inches high. Um, and uh, because I'm a small operation, my output is limited. So um, I would say if we uh, complete uh, one to two pieces a month. So that means that basically we try to um, uh, consolidate everything, right? Because that's most economical. So it's kind of like a pickup happens uh, once every two months maybe, um, and everything fits into the size of a, a UPS truck. Okay, great, thank you. Thanks. One more question. Um, hi, uh, Diana Chapman again. Um, just wondering how you um, dispose of your leftover products, your empty solvent, you know, bottles, et cetera. Um, what are you going to follow the same process you do now in your current studio space, or do you have to adapt? Yeah, so I would follow the same process I have the current studio space. Uh, I don't, there's no, um, where I am now, there's no, uh, dumpster or anything I use. We have to take things and dispose of them at the appropriate transfer station. Um, and um, yeah, I also, I plan on heating the structure with like a, a wood burning stove. So as we kind of like make our ways, you know, so. Thank you. Um, can we explain how we have to make a finding that this will not adversely affect the value of adjacent properties? Yep. Can you explain um, why, in your view, that that's the case here? Um, yeah, I, I just don't think it's going to uh, cause any kind of like impediment. Meaning, I don't think um, anyone is going to be um, irritated, annoyed, or really um, notice what's going on kind of thing. I think I'm just building, um, I'm lucky enough that I have like a, a double lot and I'm just building another structure which 
on my lot and I happen to be working from inside every day, but I don't see how um, I'm not going to be working outside. I'm not going to be causing any uh, fumes. Um, the noise, as I mentioned, is going to be kept to a standard uh, that is, is already um, uh, allowable within my home. Um, and uh, I think if anything, I don't know, it's kind of like a value added to uh, have something, you know, interesting going on in the, within the community, retain it within the community. How old, um, I think you explained it a little bit in the application, but how will the accessory structure blend into both your property and to the neighboring property? Yeah, so my, I mean, my house now is uh, painted uh, like a deep, I don't know, ocean blue with like a black roof. Um, I'd like to paint my new structure black specifically because I just think that's going to let it uh, be there, sit back, not be noticeable as much as possible. My, my, yeah, my intention is for it to blend in as much as possible, however possible that is. Um, you know, no signs, nothing loud. I, I, I enjoy working. Like I said, I have no visitors. I, I don't want to be causing any attention or, you know. Um, so, yeah, I think with the, the appropriate noise insulation, um, like I said, because of the distance I have, I think it's going to be set back like 60 feet from the front. Um, it's, it's set back to the maximum to the back of the lot. Um, there's no home uh, behind me. Um, Kevin's the, the closest, the closest guy. So, um, yeah, I mean, my obviously I'm biased, but my intention is, is not to, to bother anyone. I, I think all, all I can do is um, say that I don't use any uh, toxic chemicals. Um, the noise I already make is not egregious, but I'm happy to send you the info, but I'm going to be using the, the highest rated, um, it's, again, it's SDC 50, but it's the highest noise dampening you can have. Um, so I, I don't foresee any, any issue with causing any notice. Okay. As far as visual shielding, do you plan on putting any plantings or anything along the edge of the building? I can see in the rendering that there are three small bushes. Uh, is there anything that's going to shield it, the view of it from other properties? Um, Say Kevin honestly, doesn't live honestly, there anymore. I thought that far in advance. Um, I'd be happy to plant as, as many things as I, as I can. You know, I like, I like plants. Um, since we moved to our home, unfortunately, we haven't um, spent the time to, like, do, do, do the yard and, and plant and whatnot. But um, if that is something that you guys want to see or is helpful, I'm, I'm happy to commit to that. I like plants. I guess it was just my like. <laughs> I, I hadn't thought that far. Not as so good. <laughs> but, but I thought it, it being uh, the color it is and set back. I already have. I don't know. A fair amount of trees and whatnot. <clears throat> Will you have any outside storage or outside display? Well, uh, definitely no. No. Definitely no signage or anything of that, um, and I I believe there's no outside storage allowed. So, in the new, uh, you know, the the thing. So no, I don't plan on having. There there is. There's just a requirement for screening. So okay. Yeah. No. I, just I thought I, the board I should cover I that. I hadn't planned on storing anything outside. All my everything I use um, is uh, the elements are not good for it. I have a question for Ben. Um, is there any significance to the fact that this is in a non-conforming zone? Uh, no. For purposes of, of what we're looking at today? No, I don't think there is. Thank you. Are there any other questions? And I think you can take a seat for now. If there are any members of the public here that want to speak. Did you raise your hand? <laughs> no. 
That's my daughter, sorry. <laughs> right. have, we heard, have we heard anything from neighbors? I haven't. I think we can probably move to deliberations amongst the panel. We'll call you back up if we do have any okay. further factual Thank questions you. for you. want to kick us off? I can share some thoughts. Um, uh, I think to start, it's it looks like it'll it'll hit all the criteria um, put forth in the new <coughs> the new ordinance. Um, just going down the list, you know, the employee numbers are good. The traffic, which is. 2% of average or 10 trips a day. It seems like it's all right. Um, you know, my only one concern is knowing a little bit about the woodworking process was a spray booth, but that's all done offsite, so that's not an issue. Um, and, you know, thinking on it, I know several people with hobbies that are far more invasive in my neighborhood than this. So, what's proposed here? So, I don't have any. Any uh, reservations? I'd be I'd be uh, inclined to vote to approve. Just going through the remaining factors, it's um, the applicant has indicated that it's the business owner's residence for the majority of the calendar year already. It was going to ask, but since it's on the application, there was no need. So just want to make sure that's on the record. Um, there will be no signage and there will be no outdoor storage. We can maybe jump over to the conditions for, or the standards for conditional use approval as well as the definition. So that's, if you're looking at your new book, it's numbers page 64. Um, so the standards for conditional use approval, um, any conditions for, uh, for such conditional use will be satisfied. So we can create conditions, and I realize that that question on the application is really confusing. Um, so we can create conditions like screening, et cetera, that are required or, or number of trips to the property. Um, it won't create hazardous traffic conditions and added the existing and foreseeable traffic in the vicinity. And, it sounds like there'll be very few trips to the property, um, a truck no larger than a UPS truck, which probably is already visiting this neighborhood numerous times a day, given the amount of uh, mail order deliveries <coughs> people receive these days, I would say. Um, it won't create unsanitary conditions by reason of sewage disposal or emissions to the air or other aspects of its design or operation. Um, it won't adversely affect the value of adjacent properties, and that's something that we can discuss, obviously, since that's a, a finding we need to make. Um, the proposed site plan and layout are compatible with adjacent property uses and with a comprehensive plan, and I, I printed out parts of that comprehensive plan for us to discuss if we feel like it. Um, and then the design and external appearance of any proposed building will constitute an attractive and compatible addition to the neighborhood. Although it may not have a similar design appearance or architecture, although it does sound like you're trying to really blend in with the existing architecture and the existing building, which I appreciate. Yeah, please go back to the microphone to speak. Also, uh, I just wanted to note, as a result of this, I'm going to have to connect to City Sewer. My property currently <laughs> has septic, um, and so the new structure will have to um, connect to the sewer. Um, and uh, in conjunction with, if, if this is allowed to move forward, I'm going to be switching uh, my home as well. If you're not doing all the excavation work and whatnot, I'll be group, sorry, grouping it all together. So the new structure will have to be connected to okay. sewer. So on the application, it says type of sewerage disposable existing it says public right now it is private it's for yes my okay. home has uh, i think the only it's just a mistake the only right? septic system in the neighborhood left yes exactly <laughs> yes everybody else has made the switch it's lucky me <laughs> <laughs> so 
So I just wanted to know that that's. Yeah, uh, thank you. I appreciate that correction to what's on the application too. I'll just speak really quickly to the comprehensive plan. Um, it does allow for commercial activities in residential areas. Um, you know, there's obviously a, a bias toward having those in the business districts and not a residential one, but it is permitted. And so I wanted to point that out. Um, and then, what else was there? I think I didn't print out the different pages, but. Um, yeah, the town shall continue to allow businesses in residential areas subject to the restrictions that protect the integrity, integrity and tranquility of Cape Elizabeth's residential neighborhoods. And this is a, a quite tranquil neighborhood for anybody who's been there. And I, I think that you have demonstrated with talking about the decibel levels and the level of insulation that it, it won't be impacting the, the peace of the neighborhood any more than normal appliances in a home. So that was reassuring to hear. No, I'll just weigh in briefly. The um, yeah, I, I mean, I s these home businesses can be controversial. I, I see this one as being pretty benign, um, as far as they go. I was reminded of my very first um, board meeting. If you remember that, one. <laughs> it was filled the room. So this this is is not that. I, you know, the, the one of these the one standard that always kind of gives me pause is the one about whether it will adversely affect the value of adjacent properties, since that seems to almost imbue us with some kind of godlike ability to predict that. But I, my sense around that is that if this continues to fit in the neighborhood and people aren't aware of it, then it will not affect, uh, I think that's sufficient for us to say that it will not um, affect adjacent values, and especially if people aren't complaining about it. I, I feel comfortable saying that, at least in this case, um, it would not um, affect, adversely affect uh, property values. Um, and I haven't fully thought out what, if any of the, what conditions we might wish to impose. I, I don't I mean, know if we want to consider hours, limiting the hours of operation or not, but it's just, um, you know, something I, I guess we might want to consider. Criteria, them, uh, criteria themselves don't specifically speak to that, but it's, it's certainly um, something that's mentioned as part of the conditional use process. And it could be hours of use that are, uh, we may be jumping ahead to, we've approved this, but um, hours of use that are, are um, for using equipment as opposed to just physically being in the space as well, if that makes sense, so hours of loud use or non-innocuous use that want to inhibit him from being in the property after five if not as a firm deadline oh oh i thought you said no. kevin yes of course <laughs> please speak colin powers I, i'll start first with a question for ben and then i can add my thoughts um i think i'm not well how does this work when the current applicant is done with the property and then say he sells it and now somebody sees that there's a standalone structure out there and wants to put an auto repair or whatever, who knows? It, that, that I assume has to go to you for approval. I, I think there's, I'm just looking for some reassurance that there's controls on that somehow. I, I do think there's controls on that and I, and I think if the business was uh, different from what was approved, different from the findings of fact, the conditions imposed, uh, that the person would have to come back. But you know, someone could, you know, buy buy the property and use it, you know, very very similarly. But but that's that's a good question, and that's a you know a good reason to do uh, diligent findings and maybe a couple conditions. I think if you look at um, section F, duration of conditional use, it's, you know, so long as it's used for such purposes, so we need to define what such purposes are. It can't just be commercial purposes. It may be artist, furniture, studio, 
um, to really limit that use. So anybody who wants to change that use has to come back before the, the board. It's a great question. I, I agree. Um, and then my thoughts, um, right along with everybody else, I'd, I'd be inclined to approve this. I have no knowledge of this applicant's work, um, but I've been employed in similar situations and it sounds from what's been described that this would be even more minimal than what I'm used to. And I don't think anybody even know it would be there. Um, so I would consider it less intrusive than woodworking, sounds like, or like furniture making, excuse me. So as far as if you had a dream neighbor, neighbor it's probably be it. Um, the 70 decimals is not much. <coughs> Actually, I do have another question for you. You have to go to the microphone, I'm sorry. <laughs> do you ever plan on hiring more than one employee down the road? Um, I, like up to two, for example? <laughs> yeah, I, th I think that, uh, to first off, um, I have no idea. I've been working, I've been running my own business for I think uh, 13 years now. And yeah, the most I've ever had is one employee. So um, I have no idea what the future holds, but I don't anticipate it. I believe, uh, you'll correct me, I believe the, uh, the thing allows for two. It like, does allow for two, and I yeah. wouldn't want us to actually accidentally put a condition on there that says one yeah. employee. I don't know. As, as, it, as, it, as, it, as it stands now, business isn't good enough to uh, <laughs> be hiring, nor has it been for the past 13 years. So, um, you know. So that is not my intention. Uh, I don't know what 10 years from now holds. But. Yeah. I just didn't want to force you to come back here three years no, from no, now no. when all yeah. of a sudden you go through the roof in popularity in yeah. New York and yeah. need a second employee, so. Yeah. <laughs> or an increase in traffic. If, yeah. You know, if it grows really big. Mm -hmm. but. but then the output would need to be much greater. Yeah. Than is physically possible. It sounds like the yeah. quality of the work. Kind of, I, 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 uh, I, I kind of shoot myself in the foot by what I do. Kind of, it, it can't really, unfortunately, because I'm involved in it, it can't really grow beyond a certain yeah. thing. All right. Thank you very Thanks. much. I have a question for Ben. Um, with regard to the criteria in um, the definition of a, of a home business, uh, are those criteria in effect self-enforcing or do we need specific conditions to, um, to inf for you to enforce them down the road? I mean, for example, parking allows up to 10, 10 uh, trips per day, I think. <coughs> sufficient for for that to just to be to to govern um, traffic in the future or do we need to say um, traffic shall be limited to no more than 10 I, I, I think you could argue that he put two trips per day in his application so he could be limited to two trips per day and I, and then and then I think secondarily he, he, it's definitely limited at 10 but <laughs> It's some. It's it's either two or ten from a legal perspective. It could never be more than that, and I think that would be self-enforcing. And we have somebody in the waiting room. I'm hearing. There's no name attached to it, though. So. Really? Do they read? Are we requiring that everybody provide? first and last names before coming into the room. We, we do require a name and, and I don't see anybody. Okay. I'd hate for this to be the meeting where we give green bonds. So. <laughs> Anybody ready to make a motion? Colin Powers, uh, take a stab at this. Makes a motion to approve 
the application of Stefan Rurick, if I said that correctly. Corner of the property at 11 Spruce Lane, map U36, lot 49, to construct an art studio in order to establish a, a home business based on section 19-5-5 of the zoning ordinance. Hang on. But we're not approving construction, just conditional use, right? Yeah. I believe that's correct. Yeah. Okay. Do we want to amend the motion or? We'll be going to that in additional findings, correct? Uh, I'm just making a motion. So oh, no. Uh, we're not approving the construction of the art studio. I think it's just the way that it's worded on here. We're approving the conditional use permit for the con in the construction of a separate art studio on the property. So should I re reword my uh, motion to approve? Sounds like it. Um, to how would we request for a con oh. conditional use? Okay. What says? I'll take again, redo. Colin Powers is making a motion to approve the request of Stefan Rurick, owner of the property at 11 Spruce Lane, map U36, lot 49, to obtain a conditional use permit to operate an art studio as a home business based on section 19-5-5 of the zoning ordinance. Thank you, I had a defective copy. Uh, Adam Foster Webster, I second. I want to change it slightly because it hasn't been constructed yet that we need to say a conditional use permit to construct an art studio because the construction is part of what we need to do. <laughs> Sorry. Is that what he said the first time? It is. It, no, the, we were missing the conditional use permit the first time. Okay, but do we want to even have anything in there to do with construct because we're not approving anything? We, we are approving it in a separate building because the, the new definition of home business allows it to be in a separate building. So we're approving a conditional use in a separate building that is yet to be built. We're not approving the construction of the building itself though. Okay, I agree with that. Yep. Don't wanna get any yep, no, I agree. to challenge us. No, I, I agree, <laughs> we have to make it clear. I yeah. think that works, that sounds right. Do I need to restate that again? I think we've Probably got it. Do we have that on the record? The conditional use permit to construct. Is that how you want to word it? Yeah, I'd, I'd say to establish a home business in a proposed structure. Let me read that again. <laughs> we'll get it eventually. Colin Powers makes a motion to approve the request of Stefan Rurek, owner of the property at 11 Spruce Lane, map U36, lot 49, to obtain a conditional use permit to, for, uh, to operate an art studio in a proposed, what do we say? Structure. Proposed structure. Structure, <coughs> or in a structure to be, uh, proposed structure to operate an art studio I lost it. I'm going to have to write this out. Okay. That's what the DPU First up, the DPU. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, I didn't give you the best language to work with there. No, I, you had a great, and I lost it. I mangled it. I'm blind. I don't offer to move. <laughs> Here the request of Stefan Rurick to corner of the property, 11 Spruce Lane, map U36, lot 49, for a conditional use permit to operate an art studio in a separate structure to be built to establish a home business based on section 19-5-5 or something similar. Close enough, right? Yeah. Covered it.
Can we okay. second the motion? <laughs> I think Adam did, right? Yeah. Okay. I can, we, Adam Foster Webster, I, I re-second. Okay, he re-seconds it. We have to do roll call for the yes. motion again. Joe Barbieri. Yes. Adam Foster Webster. Yes. Doreen Rockstrom. Yes. Diana Chapman. Yes. Colin Powers. Yes. Catherine Kirkham. Yes. Okay, so it's unanimous. We'll now move on to findings of fact, and I think we may need to flesh these out a bit more, unfortunately. Um, so I'll just go through what we have. So findings of fact number one, the property is a non-conforming lot in the RA zone. The property contains a single family dwelling. Finding of fact two, the proposed structure complies with the dimensional requirements for a non-conforming lot in the RA zone. And the additional findings of fact. Um, number one, I think this is where we probably need to list out everything that we have considered um, for the definition of home business. So the applicant has demonstrated <laughs> that their proposed their proposal complies with the definition of home business in section 19-1-3 of the zoning ordinance. Um, do we think that we need to say, number one, it does not have more than two full-time or equivalent employees, number two, et cetera? I think we say um, complies with the specific criteria in the definition of home business. I yeah. think listing every detail, we make a blanket statement. I think it would just would make it very easy for somebody who is reading this and is like, they didn't think about the fumes or you know whatever it is to come back and say, yes, they absolutely considered the criteria. Um, just that way they don't have to watch a video of us to determine <laughs> that we've done this. <laughs> so I, I think maybe we do go through and it can be like A, B, C, D, E under it maybe, or, or you know, the way we list it out for other things, you know. Yeah, like home uh, business. It says no more than two employees. Uh, in, in the definition, yeah. yeah. Definition. Uh, no, no, I know. I'm saying should we go through each of the things in the definition to say we've considered the them like we do for other things, like that it has septic, et cetera, for other statutes or other ordinance sections, so. So instead of, um, with the definition of business in section 19-1-3 of the zoning ordinance because, and we can have, you know, A, there are not more than two full-time or equivalent employees, we're not a resident of the dwelling unit. who are to be involved or employed on the premises on a regular basis in the business or professional use. And then B, the nature of the business or professional use will not increase vehicular traffic on the street. And I think we can say by more than tr 10 trips a day, and I don't know if we, I, I think we can say by more than 10 trips a day for now and then impose a condition later if we want to do that. <coughs> and then three, the business or professional use will not produce any odors, fumes, dust, glare, noise, discharge of fluids, or electrical interference in excess of that produced by normal residential use. If I'm doing letters and numbers at this point, um, D or four, any external alteration of the, of the building or site, including the provision of parking in accordance with section 19-7-8 off street parking, will not detract from the residential character of the neighborhood. E, the home business shall be operated on the property, which is the business owner's residence for the majority of the calendar year. And then say F, there will be no signs on the property or outdoor storage of equipment or materials. Does that all make sense? Mm -hmm. Yes. And maybe we can move to additional finding of fact. The applicant has demonstrated that their proposal complies with the standards of conditional use approval found in section 19-5-5B, or yeah, 5.B of the zoning ordinance. And again, I don't know if we need to go through, or is it? 
uh, D that we need there, not B. We still have the point uh, for the won't adversely affect the value of adjacent properties. Is that something oh, did that's I? questionable? Not to be, cons you don't need to consider that. Oh, oh. Um. For conditional use? Well, we just voted that to approve it. I didn't know what you wanted to oh, say oh. about that. Oh, well, these other standards are slightly different as well about sewage and hazardous traffic conditions is different than the number of vehicles. So we need to probably go through these as well. So we can say number two, you know, has demonstrated, et cetera, zoning ordinance because the proposed use will not create hazardous traffic conditions when added to existing and foreseeable traffic in its vicinity. The proposed use will not create, and I don't know if we need to letter these or what, unsanitary conditions by reason of sewage disposal, emissions to the air, or other aspects of its design or operation. The proposed use will not adversely affect the value of adjacent properties. The proposed site plan and layout are compatible with adjacent property uses and with the comp comprehensive plan. And the design and external appearance of any proposed building will constitute an attractive and compatible addition to its neighborhood. Sorry, we can leave off the rest of that. And now we need to determine whether we want any conditions on this. Mr. Barbier? Um, we might start with um, subsection G, the scope of approval, which requires that as an express condition, um, we are to uh, provide a written statement to the effect that, I'll just re read it, the permit or approval yeah. is granted, such as, et cetera. So, I would, I would suggest that as one condition that we um, include that required language. That's a great idea. And which would probably necessarily include uh, like any representations that the applicant has made would then in effect become a condition of the permit. For example, the two car trips Mm -hmm. These represent that, or the, the, the building plans, um, the compatibility of, of this, the accessory structure, et cetera, having been represented here, um, would now become a, an effectively a condition to the project um, simply by the adoption of that statement. So it can be condition one is the written statement. It says to the effect that but the permit or approval or the approval is granted subject to all elements of the final plans and specifications submitted by the applicant and all represent and, and subject to all representations oral or written made by on behalf of the applicant in support of the application. And there were some oral representations today that were slightly different than what's on the application, so we can correct for the record that it is currently on, on septic and will be moved to sewer, but also that there are, are more than two trips per day in that there are every once in a while deliveries being made and, and picked up at the, the property. And we don't want to limit it to the two per day because that's just the employee coming and going. We should be conditioning it on allowing reasonable deliveries. That may have been mentioned in the written application as well. Yeah, under number two. Number two. The traffic delivery of goods is supposed to occur every three months. It's good that oral is in here as well as written. It's not just what's in here, but it's what's said here as well. So 
the examples of some conditions we can consider are off-site street improvements, access restrictions, hours of use, buffering and screening, utility improvements, and performance guarantees. Not sure what that means, but. I don't really feel the need for any, but that's just me. <laughs> I think that we already have ordinances in effect about noise at certain times of day above certain decibel levels that already are at play here, and I'm not sure we need to <laughs> limit the hours of, of use or days of use just to what's on the application at this time. That's really all that yeah. I have to say up here. Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, I, we approved the application based on his representation that there's going to be a certain amount of noise that's going to be insulated, and yeah. as long as he sticks to that, I think that yeah. you know, we're covered. Motion approve. <laughs> Colin Powers, I'm making a motion to approve the additional findings of fact. Um, the applicant has demonstrated that their proposal complies with the definition of home businesses in section 19-1-3, the zoning ordinance, and the applicant has demonstrated that their proposal complies with the standards of conditional use approval found in section 19-5-5.b of the zoning ordinance. Should we also was consider the one condition that is? Yeah, I don't. Ha I didn't have language. that down there. Yeah. This is the scope of approval from paragraph G on page sixty-five. And then it's number three. The. Uh, I think it's uh, it's separate under conditions and not additional findings of fact. Oh, okay. Okay, so that wouldn't be a number three. It'd be additional condition. It's number one. What is that? Nineteen dash five dash five dot G. Yeah. How would we word that? That the approval is granted subject oh, to I elements see. of the so final plan. We're going to take it verbatim from there. Yeah. Um, so, in addition to the addition, additional findings of fact, we place a condition that all permits or approvals shall include as express condition. A written statement to the effect that the permit or approval is granted subject to all elements of the final plans and specifications submitted by the applicant and to all representations, oral or written, made by or on behalf of the applicant in support of the application. Without, without parsing it too finely, I, I think I might just start that at the point where it says on the second line, the permit or approval is granted subject to all elements. Because the, the first line is really direction to us as to what we're supposed to do. And then the permit or approval is what we need to say as, as a condition. We can just say the approval because we're it not doing the permit right now. It's granted subject to all these, uh, and then, yeah. then the rest of it. The permit will also have to have the same language on it. But the approval is granted subject to all elements of the final plans. I thought I'd just start there. Do you need me to reread okay that? that change? Yeah. Yep, I'm fine. I, I think that. we can move forward with that. I think Carmen second it. <laughs> Adam Foster Webster. Um, move second. Ben. Do we need to do roll call vote? Colin yeah. Powers. I approve, yes. Diana Chapman. Approve. Catherine Kirkham. Approve. Joe Barbieri. Approve. Adam Foster Webster. Approve. Doreen Rockstrom. Approve. Thank you so much for your time. When's the grand opening? No, there is no grand oh, yeah. opening, Joe. <laughs> they didn't get approved for that. You want to close the meeting? Already. What do I do to close that? Uh, adjourn. Oh, move, meeting. Move, move I move to, to adjourn the meeting. <laughs> like, I move for Kevin to come back. Is that a motion I can make? All right. We are
We are done. We don't need to, okay. Okay. We're done. <laughs>